I know that you are searching how to induce labor at home and super fast, right? That was totally me when I was 40 weeks pregnant and I am here to save you a lot of time on researching and Googling. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact techniques that I used to put myself into labor in under 12 hours. And yes, I'm going to actually demonstrate how to do these labor inducing techniques, so stay tuned. Hi, my name is Dancy Pinkston, also known as Fearless Mama. I would appreciate it if you gave me a big thumbs up down below if you know this is going to be great content. With that being said, let's get started. So by doing a ton of research, I've figured out that the best way to naturally induce labor is to help support those ligaments that are holding the uterus by making sure they are balanced and relaxed enough to let the baby's head flex or chin tucked, and then rotate a posterior baby into anterior position and then settle down into the pelvis so that baby can push on the cervix and then hopefully dilate and thin it out. Hence the purpose of these labor-inducing techniques. So step one, we want to support rotation so that we can get engagement. My baby was posterior or sunny side up, meaning her face was facing my belly button. So I knew I needed to rotate her into a better birthing position by balancing the inner pelvic ligaments. So the first technique that I used to induce labor was the rebozo sift. You will need to get a sturdy rebozo blanket or just a tight blanket that doesn't stretch to encourage deep relaxation of the smooth muscles and mind. You'll need a partner to gently shimmy the top of the blanket so that you're lifting up the belly and kind of jiggling the belly gently. And you'll do this for about three minutes. The next technique I did was the side lying release to give room in the pelvis and soften or balance the pelvic floor. You're going to want to lay gently on one side of a couch or a table or a bed about two inches to the edge. If you're big and pregnant, your belly will hang over. And this is why you need a partner or a helper to help hold your hips vertical and keep you from tipping forward or backwards. Then you want to flex your top foot towards your chin and gently lay it across the other and let it hang gently. Then you want to balance out your hips by switching to the other side and repeat the steps. Another technique similar to the side lying release is dip the hip created by Deb Lawrence. You'll want to do this gently to make room in the pelvis for baby to rotate from the right to the left or from posterior to anterior position. So what you want to do is lean your hands on a sturdy surface or a bed and gently rock your hips dip in a dipping motion by bending each knee and your partner can help you guide your hips slowly down and up and down and up. The next technique I used was the standing sacral release. You'll want to have a helper or a partner gently touch the bottom of your belly and then on top of your sacrum so that you can just sway and freely move in a nice releasing motion. This is going to help align the sacrum which may be torqued on the vertical axis and distorting the lower uterine segment. You'll want to do this for about three to ten minutes. The last technique that I used to help rotate my baby was the forward leaning inversion to align the pelvic brim and to give room in your lower uterine segment. This one was a bit awkward and I felt a lot of pressure in my head when doing this, but I've read this is totally normal and you generally acclimate pretty quickly. So you're going to want to get on your knees on a couch or the edge of the bed and then slowly walk your hands down to the floor onto your elbows and stay in your inversion for 30 seconds. Then you'll want to slowly walk your hands back up and set your body into perfect alignment so that your baby and all the ligaments can rest in a good healthy balanced spot. And you can give that a few seconds so that everything is back into order. I personally did these techniques three times throughout the day, morning, noon, and night. Probably would be best to do the inversion before you eat dinner. <laughs> okay, so the second step 
to inducing your labor at home is to support descent. So the optimal thing to have is an anterior facing baby who is head down. So I never had to use these following techniques right after rotation because right after I felt my baby spin into position, she quickly dropped down, descended down, and I had her within three hours. But what I would have done if I were needing extra support to relax and balance my ligaments are these activities I'm going to share with you. So the first one is again the forward leaning inversion. You'll just want to do the same thing. You'll want to do these through one to three contractions one to three times to give room in the lower uterine segment. You do not want to do the forward lean inversion if you have polyhydromosis or if your water has broke with a big gush. This is because you want to make sure the umbilical cord doesn't slip in between the baby's head and your cervix. Instead, you could ask a chiropractor to adjust your pelvis and neck. The second thing I would do is the standard sacral release again. This is great to do in labor and to align your sacrum which could be torqued or ultimately distorting the lower uterine segment. The third thing I would do to increase descending is the psoas release. This is mainly to relax the psoas muscle pair. I found that this was very good to resolve chronic muscle tension in the iliopsoas with a good psoas stretch such as the forward lunge gently and frequently done through the day. You can also sit with the knees lower than your hips or any activity that arches your body backwards from your leg socket, but be cautious of laying on your back for long periods of time. If this was needed during labor, I would definitely do the abdominal lift and tuck. So I knew if in labor I was having long or hard contractions, I would need to be doing this exercise when my contractions were becoming predictable. When you feel a contraction coming on, you're going to want to sink into your helper or partner's arms and just help tuck that little lower portion of your tummy where the head of the baby could sometimes get stuck. This is to help your baby tuck the chin and then flex the head down into the pelvic brim and that way it can slip into the pelvic brim and engage where you can then have more productive contractions. Another great thing you could be doing is walking briskly with free swinging thighs. You could also sit on a birthing ball and make circles or figure eights with the hips for about 20 minutes. And you wanna make sure that you only do this if your baby is in the anterior birthing position and only after 30 weeks pregnant. Another great option is having a pregnancy belt. Some people may have to wear the pregnancy belt through labor and pushing to keep the baby in a safe position. If the belly hangs over the pubic bone or the pendulous belly, it may prevent a stall in labor. There are all types of pregnancy belts you could purchase online, just, you know, whatever the mother is comfortable with. I already had a little linen um, baby wrap that I was going to put my daughter in and it worked perfectly for a belly wrap. Another thing you could be doing is working on prenatal yoga or prenatal exercises and stretches to help balance those ligaments and open the, the pelvic brim. And this can be done throughout pregnancy, but also ask your care provider. I personally did prenatal yoga and diastasis safe exercises and stretches throughout my entire pregnancy and I think that really had an impact on how fast I had my baby. Once that head is pressing onto the cervix and signaling all those natural labor inducing hormones, labor will begin. A few things before you go, there are other things like acupressure points that I was interested in and did use. And let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in me talking about acupressure points. But make sure to not try and descend your baby before 38 weeks with acupressure points such as the shoulder well, or by doing circles or figure eights on your exercise ball, or the abdominal lift and tuck. And try not to get your posterior baby to descend before a medical induction. If this set of activities doesn't help your posterior baby to turn, or if you're confused about something, please head over to the Spinning Babies website. I have the link in my description box so that you can fully educate yourself on this topic. Also, I want to encourage you that if your baby is not posterior and earlier natural labors have gone well, labor will naturally help turn and engage this baby. So it's not so much for second time moms, third moms, but the first time mom, it's super important to make sure 
your baby is already turned into a good birthing position. On the other hand, if your labor is just not starting, I really suggest doing the balancing activities. It is best to work on your pelvic balance throughout your entire pregnancy before working on rotation and descent in late pregnancy. And by balance, I mean keeping your posture, making sure you're not butt tucking, not crossing your legs, sitting on your sits bones, and sleeping smart. Or by doing safe prenatal yoga exercises and stretches and diastasis safe prenatal exercises. And I talk a lot about posture and alignment in my other how to induce labor at home fast video if you would like to check that out right after this one. That's all I have for you in this video. As always, thanks for watching. Leave me comments down below, any questions, next video suggestions, and I will see you in the next video.